Okay, today's daf we're learning is Shabbat Pezayin. Uh, today's shir is sponsored by Sarah Robinson in memory of her father, Moshe Nachum ben Chana Liba and Yaakov Zichrono Levracha. We're in the middle of trying to figure out when exactly Matan Torah happened. And we're going to figure out, um, we're going to have to determine what, what day of the week was Rosh Chodesh. And from there we can figure out Rosh Chodesh Sivan. And from there, we can figure out what day of the week Matan Torah happened. We're actually not going to figure out because we're going to have all different opinions. And we're going to try to, what we're going to have today is we're going to start with the difference between Rabbi Yossi and the rabbis. We started with Rabbi Yossi. We'll quickly review it today. And then we're going to basically bring sources that seem to contradict one or the other. That's going to be the whole structure for today. So if we start back at the end of Pevav Amubet, we started with Rabbi Yossi, who said it happened on the 7th of the, of the month, right? So 7th, right, in, like we said, in Chutz Laaretz, they have Shavuot two days, Vav and Zayin, which is very nice because they cover both days. In, in Israel, we only have it on Vav, which doesn't, care, which doesn't hold by Rabbi Yossi's opinion. Um, I saw someone yesterday who commented, which is kind of nice, that there's this concept since Shavuot is only one day and not a whole week like all the other holidays. However, there's a law of Tashlumin, which is that you can, if you forget to bring the Korbanot or you didn't bring them on time, you can bring them the whole week. And that really the whole week is somewhat connected to Shavuot also. That's why we don't say Tachanun um, for a number of days after Shavuot. So there's this connection and maybe you can at least... In Israel, where they don't have it on Zion, in Zion, you can at least connect it that it's one of the days of the Tashlumin. So now Rabbi Yossi comes and says, how did this all work out? Okay, if you remember, we talked about that. It says, Bayom Azeh, they got to Midbar Sinai, and it says, Achodesh Hazeh Lechem, Rosh Chodeshim. Both times it says, Zeh, when it came to Achodesh Hazeh, Rosh Chodeshim, it was Rosh Chodesh. And therefore, when Bayom Azeh, they got to Midbar Sinai, that was Rosh Chodesh. Then it says, Zachorik Yom HaShabbat Lekadsho in the Aseret HaDibor. And just like it said when they got out of Mitzrayim, Zachor Tayom Azeh, remember this day, this is the day you got out of Egypt. And that was actually the day they got out of Egypt. So when God says, remember Yom HaShabbat, it must have been, now this is a big jump, it's not so clear, but it must have been that the day God said, remember the day of Shabbat, was Shabbat itself. Okay? And therefore, everyone's going to be in agreement that the Torah was given on Shabbat. Like I said, the difference is going to be when was Rosh Chodesh and therefore which day of the week came out to be, you know, which date was Shabbat. So then we said, the whole machloke kipliga, I'm now five lines from the bottom of Pevav Amubet, bikfiya diarche. The whole question became, what day was Rosh Chodesh? Rabbi Yossi Savar Becha Beshabe Ikbayarcha. It happened on Sunday. Sunday was Rosh Chodesh. Moshe didn't speak to the people at all because he was too weak, right? After traveling. That's the next thing Moshe says to them. Then, Then, sorry, I skipped the word. On the third day of the week, he told them, stay away from the mountain, right? Make a boundary around the mountain. Now, this is a little bit problematic because if you look at the verses, that actually comes after he tells them to separate from their wives, okay? That the husbands and wives should, be, should stay separated. So it's a bit of a strange thing. Why did they say that that happened before? We're going to get to that later today. Ba'arba'a, on the fourth day of the week, Avid Prisha. Now this matches, this is how we got to this in the first place. This matches Rabbi Yossi's opinion that they were told to separate on day number four, which means that how many days are they separating? Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, three days of separation. We're, that's where we learn about the three days of separation, that they have to separate for three days because Apoleta Chechvatsera is going to be Tmei'ah for three days. Okay, that's Rabbi Yossi's approach. Versus the rabbis, we're going to see, say it's only two days, and that's where Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah gets it from. So according to this, that's how we get to on the fourth day, they were told to separate. Rabbanan Savre, they agree about the order of events. Their one difference is that they say, Bitre Bashaba Ikbayarcha, Rosh Chodesh was on Monday. Bitre Bashaba Lo Armalahu Velo Midi, the first day he didn't speak to them because he was tired from the walk, from the traveling. Mishum Chulsha de Orcha. Bitlata Amarlu Vatem Tiuli, then they're told, you're going to be to me, and Amamlechi Koanim and Agoy Kadosh, right up. Um, on the fourth day, they were told to separate from each other. 
to separate, I'm sorry, to separate from the mountain, right? To make a boundary around the mountain. And on the fifth day, they were told to separate. So if they're told on the fifth day to separate, then we end up with how many days? Only two days of separation. And that's where Rabbi Lazar ben gets it from. Okay. We're going to start now with a list of questions, and we're going to a little bit ping pong back and forth. We're just going to bring source after source after source that seems to indicate either like one or the other until we finally get to our last source for today, which is going to be a question on both of them, where we're going to have a count. Okay, it's interesting that there's a lot of counts about these days and how it worked and how it all came about. Um, and all ma- a lot of what matters is how many, you know, first of all, we start with Matan Torah, um, with getting out of Mitzrayim, what day of the week was that? And from there we get to, well, how many days were in the month of Nisan and how many days were in the month of Ir? Hebrew months can either have 30 days or 29 days, right? They're either called Chodesh Chaser or Chodesh Male, right? There's no average month. It's either less or more, right? A full month or a less full month. So it's either going to be 29 days or 30. Generally, an art calendar, Nisan is always Male. 30 days, ER is always chaser, 29 days, right? That just happened. We have one day of Rosh Chodesh, right? When there's a 30-day month, you have two days of Rosh Chodesh, both on day number 30 and on day number one. So let's go on and let's see how this works out. So the first source is going to be a question of Rabbi Yossi. So just to remind you, Rabbi Yossi says Rosh Chodesh was on Sunday, in which case, when they got the Torah on Shabbat, it was Zion Sivan and not Vav Sivan. So it was the seventh day of Sivan. Metive. So here comes our question. Metive always means we're going to have a question on Atana. I'm sorry, on an Amora from Atana Itic source. Okay, so here actually it's not exactly because Rabbi Yossi and the rabbis, it's actually, this is a good exception to the rule. Metive is here, in this case, it's a question from Atana Itic source on Atana. Bikidashem hayom umacha. Kashia le Rabbi Yossi. So now they say, okay, it says, Bikidashem hayom umacha. Kidashem means you should separate, right? Kodesh is always to separate. Right? You should separate from the husbands from the wives. Hayom umachal. That's what it says in the Pasuk there, right? Hashem Moshe Lecha La'am Hayom Umachar Lotam. Right? They should be sanctify themselves and they should wash their clothing. So now what do you see? How many days? Hayom Umachar. That's two days. According to Rabbi Yossi, there were three days. That doesn't seem to make much sense. So, Amar Lecha Rabbi Yossi, Yom Echad Hosif Moshe Midato. Fascinating. Hashem said, separate for two days. And Moshe said, wait a minute, we should add an extra day. Okay, so now we're going to have to figure out why did Moshe want to add an extra day? And did God agree with this entirely or not? So again, according to Rabbi Yossi's count, God wanted them to separate Wednesday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Because remember, on Wednesday, they were told to separate. So Wednesday and Thursday. But Moshe said, let's add Friday also. So now we're going to see Ditanya, as we see in the following Brayta, Shlosha Dvarim Asa Moshe Midato. This wasn't, by the way, the only time this happened. There were three times where Moshe initiated something. V'iskim HaKadosh Baruch Imo. Okay, and God agreed with him. Here we go with the three things, and then we'll go into each one. Hosif Yom Midato. So that was our case. Peresh min ha'isha, he separated from his wife Tzipora after Matan Torah. We'll talk about this. Vishiber haluchot, and he broke the luchot, right? God didn't tell him to do either one of those three things. Moshe decided to do them, and God agreed with him. So now we're going to see why did Moshe decide to do the following things, and how do we know that God agreed with him? Hosif yom ha'midato, my darish. What, would he, what was he thinking when he added one day? Well, he said like this. Darish hayom umachal. Hayom kimachal. God said, separate today and tomorrow. Now, when they were standing there, it must have been during the day of the fourth day, meaning of Wednesday. Standing there on Wednesday, and God says, separate for two days. Now, if you separate Wednesday, you're only separating for part of Wednesday because part of Wednesday already passed. The day in the Jewish calendar goes by, starts by the night. So just like the next day, which was Thursday, was going to be a day and a night with it, right? So, hayomu machar, ma machar lelo imo, Meaning Thursday included Wednesday night. So therefore, Afhayom le lo imo. So Wednesday should also include Tuesday night. What's the problem? Laila da'id na nafkale. Tuesday night had already passed. It was too late to tell them to separate. So therefore, Shmamina treyome levar meha'idna. Therefore, he concluded it must be two days, not including the day we're up to. So therefore, he said, not just Wednesday, but it must be 
Thursday and Friday also. So therefore he adds an extra day. So according to Rabbi Yossi, remember Rabbi Yossi has a problem with the text. It says, Hayomu Machal. So Hayomu Machar he determines to be not only Hayomu Machar, but Hayom is only a part day. So we need an extra day. We're going to add a third day. Now how do we know that God agreed with him? If really God meant Hayomu Machar, Wednesday and Thursday, then when should we have gotten the Torah? Friday morning. But we all already learned that the Torah was given on Shabbat. So the fact that God didn't rest his presence on the mountain until Shabbat shows that God must have agreed with what Moshe did. Again, this is only according to Rabbi Yossi that it happened on Wednesday. The Hashem said, tell the people, separate. Okay? This is all if it happened on Wednesday. If it happened on Thursday, obviously Hayomu Machar is Thursday, Friday, and then you end up with Shabbat. You got the Torah. Okay? So that's the first one. Um, okay. Okay. Now we're back to, we're about 15 lines from the bottom, from the top. Uperesh Minaisha. He's separated from Tsipora. My Darish, what did he say? Why did he decide to separate from his wife? This, by the way, comes up where? It's one of the Parshaniyot. There's always a big debate when Miriam and Aaron in this week's Parsha talk about, they talk about Al, Al Moshe. They speak Lashon Ara, Miriam speaks Lashon Ara to Aaron about Moshe, about Isha Kushit Asher Lakach, and it's not so clear what they're talking, what was the Lashon Ara. One of the interpretations, and it's based on this Gemara, or this Gemara is based on that interpretation, is that what were they doing? They were talking about that Moshe separated from his wife, and they were saying that's not a good thing. Why did he leave his wife, basically? So first let's see why he left his wife, and then we'll see how we know that God agreed with him about this. Nasa Kavachomer. Okay, he said he made a Kavachomer batzmo. He made his own Kavachomer. By the way, this makes we're allowed to make our own Kavachomers. Okay, that's something, it's one of the things that you're allowed to do. Let's say a Gzera Shava, for example, you have to have a Masorit about, but a Kavachomer you can make on your own. Amal. Uma Yisrael shalo dibra shkhinayim ahem ela sha'achat vekava lahem zman. So the Torah, God, the presence of God only spoke to the people once ever. When was that? Matan Torah. And when they received the Torah. And there was a designated time when that was going to happen. And what happened? Right? Be ready for the third day. I'm going to come down. And you have to separate. So I'll take shoe, right? Don't go near your wives. Now I, God can speak to me at any time, whenever. And I don't even know when it's going to happen. So therefore, all the more so, I need to separate from my wife at all times because at any time the Shekhinah can be talking to me, I have to be Tahor. I can't be impure and therefore he's separated from his wife forever, basically. How do we know that God agreed with this? By the way, this is not uh, something that I right, notice this is very specific to Moshe, only because of Moshe. This isn't something that Judaism believes in and it should be something that's done. And in fact, it's probably one of the reasons why, according to the Parshanut, that's why Miriam was talking about Moshe, because it was seen as something very atypical and not didn't look like a good thing. So, how do we know that Hashem agreed? We're going to have two different proofs. Dichtif. Okay, when Moshe recounts uh, the giving of the Torah on Har Sinai and Sefer Dvarim, it says in the Pesukim there, Lech emor lahem shuvo lachem lo alechem. After Matan Torah happened, God said to everyone, right? He says to Moshe, tell the people, go back to your tents. Your tents is always back to your wives, meaning you separated from them, now go back. And then what does it say immediately after? Uchtib batre, right after that it says, Vata po amodi madi. But you stay with me. That means you don't get to go back to your tents. So basically that's a proof that, that Hashem agreed with Moshe. Okay, it actually sounds from there like Hashem told Moshe, but I think it's more that Moshe had already decided and then God said, well, okay, stay with me. The eat to Amre, and some people learn it from this section about Miriam and Aharon. When Miriam and Aaron, when Miriam speaks Lashon Ara to Aaron about Moshe, God says to them, you know, what were you doing? And then he says, Pe el pe adaberbo. Moshe is different because I speak to him pe el pe. I speak to him mouth to mouth, right? We sometimes... So basically, what's he saying, right? Umare ulo bechidot, right? In other words, not the same way. Utmonat Hashem yabit. He sees the 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 image of God. 
And then God says to them, And right, he's so unique. How could you have spoken about him like this? But what are they, Darshan? If this all had to do with that he's separated from his wife, God is saying, yes, he's separated from his wife because he speaks to me, pal pal. And therefore, he can't be with his wife at all times, right? He has to separate from her. And that was the way of proving, yes, Moshe was right about it. Okay, third option, third idea. By the way, remember, I'll just remind you of the structure. We all started this out because we were stuck with Rabbi Yossi. How could it be two, how could Rabbi Yossi say three days of hafrasha, of separation, when the Pasuk itself said two? And he basically says it's true the Pasuk said two because that was God speaking, but Moshe decided to add an extra day. And now, because of that, we got off on this tangent, but we'll get back to our topic soon. Shiber taluchot, my darish. What was he thinking when he broke the luchot? Ama, uma pesach, shu achad mitaryag mitzvot. Pesach is one of the 613 mitzvot. Amra Torah, the chol ben nechar lo yochal bo. So it says, anyone who's not, now ben nechar, they translate not just as not Jewish, but someone who doesn't keep the mitzvot can't eat the korban. Okay, someone who's considered a mumal who doesn't keep the Torah at all, they can't eat from the Korban Pesach. Now, right, this was something, you have to pick something that must have happened before Matan Torah, and that was the laws about Pesach. HaTorah kula kan v'Yisrael mumarim alach kama v'kama. Here I have the whole Torah in my hands. And the Jewish people are, according to this text, mumarim, according to the text of the Shines, also it's in the Koran, is mishumadim. Okay, the whole people are against God at this point. They're, right, they're worshiping, Avodazara. So of course, Allah Kama Vakama that I need to break the Luchot, I mean, they can't just like they can't eat from the Korban Pesach, they certainly can't have the Torah if this is what they're doing. And therefore he broke the Luchot. How do we know that God agreed with him about breaking the Luchot? Shinema Asher Shibarta. Okay, again, this is this is in Sefer Shmot, actually, when God tells him, get go write two new Luchot, and it says and I'll write on those luchot hadvarim asher ayu ala luchot harishonim asher shibarta. Now the word asher means that you broke. Okay, asher shibarta, that you broke. But the word asher in Hebrew also means la asher, to, to, um, it's the word to, um, to say, yes, it's okay what you did, right? You need an ishore for school, a permission slip, okay, to give permission. So basically they darshan this as, Yashakashibarta, right? Good that you did. Asher is God was Asher, he was permitting what Moshe did and saying it was okay what you did. Some people also say it's proven from the fact that we put them in the Aron Abrit, right? They kept them in the Aron all those years. If it was a bad thing Moshe did, we would have wanted to throw them out entirely, right? And therefore it also proves that it was okay that what Moshe did. Okay, we're finished with that whole section of the three things. It reminds me, by the way, of there's a list of things that Moshe had to ask God about that he didn't know, and he had like Pesach Sheni and Benot Slochad, and right. It's like it's another type of list like that where we have things that we don't know. You know, it's these exceptions to the rule that either God didn't say, right, and Moshe decided to initiate. Okay, moving on. Tashma, Bahayu Nechonim Layom Hashlishi. Again, we have another source that says you should be ready for the third day. On the third day, you're going to get the Torah, not the third day of the month. This is the third day from when they were told to separate from their wives. So, Kashi the Rabbi Yossi. So we say, this sounds like a difficulty to Rabbi Yossi. Again, it sounds like you don't need three full days. Ha'amrinan yom echad osif Moshe What do you mean? We already answered that. We said, it's true, God said on the third day, but it ended up being the fourth day because Moshe decided to add another day. That's not a question. Another source, Tashma. Shlishi, the third day of that, that section that we're talking about, when they got to the Har on the first day, right, until the, seven, until the sixth or the seventh day when they got the Torah, they say in this Brayta, Shlishi, the third day was Shlishi B'chodesh Ushlishi B'Shabbat. It was both the third day of the month and the third day of the week, meaning the third day of the month of Sivan came out on a Tuesday, which would match whose opinion? It would match Rabbi Yossi, that Rosh Chodesh was on Sunday, so one is Sunday, right? And then it's going to obviously match the days of the week, and the seven days is going to come out on Shabbat. Kashi Rabbanan. So this is a source that's difficult. Until now, we kept bringing difficulties on Rabbi Yossi. Now we're bringing a difficulty on Rabbanan, who said that Rosh Chodesh was on Monday, which means Tuesday would have been the second day of the month and not the third day. Amr the Rabbanan, Hamane Rabbi Yossihi. Ah, that doesn't bother me. You could just say that that Brayta is Rabbi Yossi's opinion, and I hold by something else. 
Shlishi Lamai. So now they say, what was, why was the first three days, did they have any importance that the brightest talking about the third day? What was unique about the first three days? Lechiditanya, as we see in the following Brighta, Vayashav Moshe Tivreya Amal Hashem, Uchtiv Vayaged Moshe Tivreya Amal Hashem. So here, there's some trouble in the Psukim, and this is why we're going to learn that the Mitzvah HaGbalah, which was written after the Mitzvah Prisha, must have been before. Because it says in the verses, okay, I'll read some of the Psukim. It says, Vaya'anu kol ha'am yachdav, they, they all answer, Vayamru kol asher diber Hashem nasa. Nase, right? We'll do whatever God says. Vayashav Moshe tivrei ha'am al Hashem, and then God brings the words of the people to Hashem. He's the middle man. I'm going to come down in the in the Anan. And then they'll believe, they'll trust in you forever. And then it says that Moshe told the words of the nation to God. Now this is very strange. It should be God told the words of Hashem to the nation, right? There's something missing here, okay? And there's no real commandment here, like, like, for example, separate from your wives or something like that. So what transpired here? So the Gemara is going to ask that question. There's something missing in the verses here. So um, so here goes the bright. Right? So it seems like Moshe returned, he basically told God something the nation said. And then the next pasuk, he said another thing that the nation said, and there's really nothing that transpired there. What did God tell Moshe to tell the people at that point? And then what did Moshe then, right? And all these things must have happened. Hashem must have told Moshe something to tell the people. The people must have told Moshe something, right? Moshe would have then told the people. They must have said something back to Moshe. And what did Moshe then go back to God about? And there's obviously something missing here. So what are the answer? Zo mitzvah tagbala. It must be that what it says later, and we always learn that e mukdamu mulchar b'torah, what it says a few psukim later about hagbala tahar, that must have been the commandment that God told Moshe in between those two, vayashev and vayaged, told them that. Moshe went and told the people, hagbala tahar. They said, okay, no problem. And Moshe brought them back to Hashem and said, okay, the people said they'll do that, no problem. Okay, that's Divrei Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda. Okay, that's one approach. So I just want to remind you what we're up to again. We're trying to figure out this bright that said Shlishi. The third day was the third day of the month, which was also the third day of the week. Why is the bright pointing out the third day? What was unique about the third day? So according to this, on the third day, they were commanded Hagbel Tahar, And that's the proof, by the way, for where we started today, where we said, if you remember, we started off with Rabbi Yossi. The first day they got to the Har. The second day they were told, you're going to be Mamlach Kohanim Begoy Kadosh. The third day they were told Hagbel Tahar. Now we have the source for it. But now we're going to have two other opinions that don't agree with this. And the thing that the first three days were spent doing something. Okay? And here they're going to say, what were the first three days spent doing? Two different approaches. Okay, and this has to do with educational approaches. What's the best way to get the people to keep the Torah? How do you start? Okay. Um, so Rebbe Omer, B'tchila peresh onsha. First, Moshe spent time talking about all the punishments in the Torah. To scare them. Right? This is serious. Dichtiv vayashev Moshe. How do they learn it? Well, they're going to basically darch in vayashev and vayagin. Vayashev is going to be what happened the first three days, and Vayaged is after that. So the first three days, Moshe spent time telling them all about all the punishments. So, here goes. How do we get this from Vayashev? Shemishavivin da'ato shaladam. They're things that make you a little bit crazy, right? They get you worked up. This is like we talked about the bodies of the women were hot because they're worked up about mitzvot, and they cause the shechat zera, the semen, to, to rot, right, to spoil. So here also, right, the, the punishments is what gets you worked up. Okay, that was Vayashev. Vayashev milashon she mishavivin. Ulebasov peresh matan schara. After that, then Moshe started telling them, oh, there's all these amazing things in the Torah. You get rewards, you get all these benefits. Dichtiv, where do we get that from? Vayaged Moshe. What's Vayaged? Tvarim she moshchin libo shal adam ke agada. Agadot, right? It's, it's like learning Gemara. You get the halachic stuff. It's very complicated. When you get to the Agadot, the stories, that's the best part, right? So, Vayaged milashon hagada to to tell to tell a story. Then he told them all the good things. Okay, so that's a, a teaching method. I remember I had a teacher a long time ago who told me, you know, you have to start out really tough in the beginning of the year. As a teacher, I remember when I started teaching, he told me, yeah, to be really tough, really mean. Then you soften up, right? And then they get serious. They know to take you seriously. I was never good at that. 
I took the opposite approach. No, the opposite approach is first tell all the rewards. The first three days you spend telling all the nice stuff. And now they're going to dash on the words the exact opposite. Vayashav Moshe, Tvarim Shem Mishivin Da'atoshal Adam. They bring you Mishiv Nefesh, they bring you happiness. Ulevasav Peresh Onsha. Then he told them all the punishments. Dichti, Vayagan Moshe, Tvarim Shakashin La Adam Kigidim. Okay, they're very hard, like your sin using your body. Lashon Hagadam. This comes up in a number of places in the Gemara that Vayaged is Kashe. Okay, then he got serious and tough with them. Right, first he said, oh, come get the Torah, it's so beautiful, and, and you kind of get them in. And once they're in, well, then you say, by the way, there's some hard stuff also, you know, it's not so simple. So that was the, that was the second approach. So these were all three parshanayot, just to remind you where we're up to. Again, today we keep getting off, we have to keep on track. Three reasons to how we darshan the first three, like what was unique about the third day or the first three days. Right. The first one was about what was unique about the third day, that they basically, and all dealing with this problem in the Pasuk, Vayashev and then Vayaged, that Moshe brought back words of the, the people, and it wasn't clear what words of the people he brought back. So that was, the first answer was, it was Mitzvah HaGbalah happened in the middle, out of order. The second two answers were, no, the first three days Moshe spent doing this, the second three days he spent, you know, or after that, he then spent the opposite. And it depends where you go, what, which opposite you get to. Next source, Tashma. Shishi, Shishi B'chodesh, Shishi B'Shabbat, just like we had a drasha, Shlishi, the third day was the third day of the week, which was also the third day of the, um, the, it was the third day of the month, was also the third day of the week, was Tuesday. Likewise, the sixth day was the sixth day of the month, which was also the sixth day of the week, which also seems to match Rabbi Yossi, and is a difficulty for the rabbis, who said that Rosh Chodesh was on Monday, not on Sunday. So, Kashi Rabbanan. So again, they answer the same way, Hanami Rabbi Yossi, he, right? That's fine, that Brighta just holds like Rabbi Yossi. Now they want to know why is this Brighta talking about the sixth day? What was unique about the sixth day? Shishi Lamai. What was, the, if the Brighta is saying it was the sixth day to something, they must have been counting six from some important event. So what important event? Rava Amar Lechanayatan, Rav Achabar Yaakov Amar Lemasa'an. Okay, it was either the sixth day of their encampment, or the sixth day of their travels. Okay, if you look at the verses there, okay, the verses there start off. The first pasuk says, okay, this is what we read on Shavuot. Okay, on the third month they got of getting out of Egypt, they went to Midbar Sinai. They traveled from Rifidim. Vayavo Midbar Sinai, they get to Midbar Sinai, Vayachanu Ba Midbar, and they camped in the desert, Vayichan Sham Yisrael Neged Haha, right, the famous song, and they camped there opposite the mountain. Now, what was the important part? Was the important part the camping, or was the important part the traveling? So when we count six days, was it six days from the travels, or six days from the camping? So Kamit what's really the root of their machloket? So the root of their machloket is some bigger issue. B'Shabbat de Mara, before that they were in Mara. The question is, did they, were, did they get the commandment for, everyone agrees that they were commanded about Shabbat and Marah. It was one of these mitzvot they got before Matan Torah, about the mitzvot of Shabbat. The question is, how much of Shabbat did they get in Marah? Now, if they got all of Shabbat and Marah, then they obviously weren't doing any malacha on Shabbat before. Now, if they got there on Sunday, so now it means, when were they traveling? It means if they couldn't travel on Shabbat, they must have traveled on Sunday. Okay, because it says, by Yisume Rufidim, now you could say maybe that was a few days ago, but if they got to the mountain on Sunday, then it must be they traveled on Sunday. If theoretically they could have traveled on Shabbat, then it could be they traveled on Shabbat, arrived there at the end of Shabbat, let's say, and then they camped on Sunday. So it depends what you hold about the Shabbat and Marah. Now how do we know that they received the Torah, they received, sorry, not the Torah, but the Mitzvah of Shabbat in Marah, Dichtiv, as it says in the Yaseret Hadibrot, the ones in Dvarim, it says, Shamor et Yom HaShabbat Lekadsho, Ka'asher Tzivcha Hashem Elokecha. Like God commanded you. That means God commanded you sometime in the past. So, that must have been in Marah. Va'amar Rav Yehuda Amarav, Ka'asher Tzivcha B'Marah. He understands that pasuk to say, you already were commanded about it before you got the Ten Commandments. Now, what's the Machloket? Mar Savar, and this is going to go back to something we saw a few a while ago. A Shabbat ibkud, a tchumin lo ibkud. They were commanded about the issue of Shabbat, but they weren't commanded about the issue of tchum Shabbat, going outside the tchum, which means that they were allowed to be traveling on Shabbat because they didn't get tchumin. Remember we talked about there's 
with the guy on the, who's stranded on a desert island, doesn't know when it's Shabbat. There's the mitzvot lotase, right? He can't ever do malachot on any day. How is Shabbat unique? We said because of Kiddush and Avdalah. And then we said this issue of Tchumin, right? We said we allow him, even though he can't do any of the malachot, he is allowed to walk. Remember Tosfot said that? Because otherwise, how is he ever going to get home if he's only allowed to walk? How's he ever going to find his way and, and stop being the Chalel Shabbatot? So we allow him to basically walk beyond the Tchum, even though maybe it's Shabbat. So we talked about the Tchumen seems to be a whole separate issue from all, right? There's Melachot, there's Lotases, there's Ases, positive commandments, and then there's this third category of Tchumen. So when what they got Mara was everything else, but they didn't get Tchumen. So if they didn't get Tchumen, then it means they traveled on Shabbat, which means that the sixth day was the sixth day to their encampment and not to their traveling. Umar Savar, the other opinion, says, a Tchumen Nami Ibkud. No, they were also commanded about Tchumen, and therefore they didn't travel on Shabbat. They traveled on Sunday. So on that day, they both traveled and camped, and therefore the sixth day was counting from their travels. Tashma, another source. That was just an aside, because we brought in this source to question Rabbana. We answered it, oh, that source is Rabbi Yossi, and then we just wanted to understand the source better. Why was the bride to tell you about the sixth day? What was unique about, you know, again, it's a little tricky. It doesn't really talk about what was unique about the sixth day. It's just kind of saying they're counting six from what, what was the important thing that happened. And again, that relates to another different machloket about what what commandments of Shabbat they received in Mara. Tashma, another source that we're going to bring to contradict. Nisan shebo yatsu Yisrael mitzrayim ba'ar ba'asar shachatu pischehen. Okay, now we're going back to Nisan. On the year they got out of Egypt, so on the 14th day, shachatu pischehen, they sacrificed the Korban Pesach. Bechamishasar yatsu, on the 15th at night, they, right, they start on the 15th, the, the night of the 15th, they start going out. Ula erev laku bechorot. And then at night was makap bechorot. Now, this sounds very strange. It should be the, the reverse. They first laku bechorot, right? God killed all the firstborns and then they left. So they, they question this bright, so they stop and they say, wait a minute. La erev salkadatach, ela mi ba erev. Before nightfall, right? Before they got out, laku bechorot. So that's what they mean. Okay, it means me at me by Erev. Before, right, right before they they left, first they had the Cholot and then they left. Here comes the important part for our purposes. Okay, now we need to start doing all these calculations. If that was Thursday, okay, the day they got out of Mitzrayim was Thursday, right? That's why Shabbat Agadol, Yud Nisan happened on Shabbat, okay? And then Friday, Thursday was the day they got out of Egypt. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, thir- uh, Thursday. So now let's do our calculation. The 15th of the month is Shabbat. Reish Yarcha Deir Shabta. If the 15th is Thursday, then what happens? So count two more weeks. Thursday is going to be the 29th, 14 days. Okay, this is simple calculation. If the 29th is Thursday, 30 days in Nisan, which we said. So two more days, you're going to count, you're going to get to Shabbat was Rosh Chodesh Iyar. But when we say Rosh Chodesh, we mean the first of Iyar. If the first of Iyar is Shabbat, Reish Yarcha de Sivan, and we already said Iyar is Chaser, it's 29 days. So the 29th is also going to be on Shabbat. So when's Rosh Chodesh going to be? On Sunday. Reish Yarcha de Sivan, Chad be Shabbat. Okay, it will be on Sunday. So Kasha the Rabbanan. Again, we have a difficulty on the rabbis who said Rosh Chodesh was on a Monday. So Amr the Rabbanan, Iyar Dahi Shate Ibure Ibruha. That year, they didn't have a set calendar. They went by the moon. They didn't see the new moon on the first day. So they ended up having ER have 30 days, which pushes it off one day, which gets you to Monday. Okay, that's their opinion. But now they say Tashma, but there's a source that says Diloi Brua Nisan. They didn't, they, Dafka Nisan wasn't Mubal. Uh, sorry, Diloi Brua, period. I read that wrong. They weren't Ma'aber. They didn't add, Ibor is, right, like a pregnant woman is Mu'beret, right? It means, the month wasn't pregnant, meaning they didn't have an extra day in ER that year. So, what did they say? Well, Nisan Shabu Yatsu Yisrael mi Mitzrayim ba Arba'a Sar Shachatu Pischehem, ba Chamisha Sar Yatsu, Ula Erev Laku Bacharot. So now they're bringing another source. So again, Nisan that year, this is all the same. On the 14th, they slaughtered the Pesach. Then on the 15th, they left, and then at night, it happened Makapa Chorot. Again, they stop and say, La Erev Salkadata, Chalaima Mi ba Erev Laku Bacharot, meaning beforehand. And again, it was Thursday. Hishlim Nisan, meaning it was a full month. 
V'ira yar liyop a Shabbat. So again, we get to Shabbat. This is all the same of Rosh Chodesh Yar. Chaser yar v'ira sivan liyop echab a Shabbat. So here you see lo ibruha because this source tells you exactly that there was no extra day in ER, meaning ER was only 29 days, which again gets you to Rosh Chodesh. So this proves that you can't answer what the rabbis tried, what they tried to answer for the rabbis. That year, ER had 30 days. Can't be because the Brita says not. Kashiel Rabbanan. So what does he simply answer? The same answer he keeps giving every time we bring a contradiction against the rabbis. Hamane Rabbi Yossihi. Ah, that source is Rabbi Yossi, not the rabbis. I didn't say that exactly right. I said the rabbis keep answering. It's not the rabbis. It's the Gemara, right? The rabbis are no longer here. These are Tanaitic sources that the Amora Im are dealing with. And the Gemara says, don't worry. He can just say, I don't hold by that source. Amar of Papa. Now Rav Papa says, brings another source. Tashma. Okay, so now it says, right, they left Elim. This is in Shmot Tetzayin. This is before Matan Torah. They left Elim. They all come to Midbar Sin, Asher Ben Elam Ubein Sinai. On the 15th day of Iyar. Okay, they get to um, Midbar Sin. So now they say, Oto hayom Shabbat haya. This day that they get there was Shabbat. How do we know? It says in the morning, you're going to seek for Hashem. And then it says, six days you're going to gather the man. This is all about the man. And then on the seventh day, um, you're going to not be able to take the man. So they basically say, because it says, it must have been already Shabbat. Okay? So, you're going to see in the morning, right? You're not going to get the man. So, on the 15th day, that was Shabbat. So, again, let's go through. If the 15th is Shabbat, count another two weeks, you get to 29 is Shabbat. And then, again, ER has only 29 days, so Rosh Kodesh is going to come out on Sunday. Rosh Yarcha Desivan, Chab Shabbat. So, again, Kashi Rabbanan, difficult for the rabbis. Again, what's the rabbis going to say? Amr the Rabbanan. Now, this is interesting. We already rejected this. But again, they say, no, no, no. Right? Remember, they said we rejected Ibruah because we said this is Brighta. But we said, no, no, no. We don't care that Brighta doesn't hold like him. In other words, Rabbanon are going to have to hold that there were 30 days in ER that year. There's no other way around it. Although, we'll see. Maybe with another count, they're going to actually give a different answer. Rav Ashi. Rav Chaviva from the city of Mechoza says to Rav Ashi, Tashma, here's another source. Okay, now we're going to talk about the following year. Okay, we know how many years are in a, in a, how many years are in a, how many days are in a year. There's 354 days in a year, in a, in the lunar calendar, unless there's a leap year. So now they're going to say, based on the next year's calculations, we could figure out when, what the first year was. So there we go. Now we're going to the first month of the second year. This was all the first year where they got out of Egypt. Now we're in the second year when they put up the Mishkan. Tana. There's a bright about that day. There were 10 new things that happened or 10 crowns, 10 things that happened on that day. Rishon Lamaseb Reshit. First of all, it was the first day of Maseb Reshit, meaning it happened on Sunday. Okay, that's the only important part for our purposes. This happened on Sunday. Which, by the way, this gives you a little bit of an inkling into why we're so concerned with what day of the week things were. Things that happen on Sunday are unique. Why are they unique, right? We don't have any special sanctity to Sunday. Our sanctity is in Shabbat. But if it happens on Sunday, there's something about it's matching creation. Creation of the world started on Sunday. If you get to Midbar Sinai on Sunday and it ends on Shabbat, right, it's almost like they had a week of the, like, the creation of the world. It was kind of like all happening again. And this connects to the Mishkan and to Shabbat. Like if you think, what's this doing here? This is all we keep connecting. Shabbat, the Mishkan, the creation of the Mishkan was like our own creation of the world. And they connect these concepts. So it makes sense that they want to say the Mishkan, the first day Ukama Mishkan was on, you know, the Mishkan was put up on Sunday. So what are the other ten things? So the other nine things. Rishon the Nisim. It was the first time the Nisim brought Korbanot to the Mikdash, right, from Prashat Naso. Rishon the Kuna, The first day the Kohanim operated in the Mikdash. Otherwise, they were working. It was the Bechorim, the firstborns. Rishon the Avodah. First time they were doing actual work in the Mishkan. Rishon the Yiridata Esh. Fire came down from the heavens. 
Rishon Lachilat Kodashim, the first time they were eating, now they did eat sac- Korbanot before, but here they mean Kodshim Kalim, right? Before that, it was only the Kohanim or the Beholim that were able to eat it, but the foods like the Shlamim that the people can eat, that happened the first time on this day. Rishon Lishikun Shechina, the presence of God rested there. Rishon Levarechet Yisrael, the Berkat Kohanim, the, ko- the priest blessed the people. Rishon the Isur Habamot, at that point, everything outside the Mishkan was forbidden. Rishon the Chodashim, it was the first month of the year. And then, so now, that was the 10 things. Now let's go back. Umi Deresh Yarcha Denisan, Dahai Shata, if that year it was Chab B'Shabbat, happened on Sunday, then De'eshtekad Bidalid B'Shabbat, then the year before it must have been on Wednesday, because if there's 354 days in a year, right, we're going to say that's going to be off by Every year, you're going to have a difference of four days because, right, it's three, it's basically 350 plus another four. Everything's going to be off by four days. Detanya, as it says in the following, bright again, they don't prove it from mathematics, simple mathematics, but they say, that there was one extra day because in a Shana Muberet, we add a month of 29 days. So 29 is four weeks plus an extra day. So it pushes everything off an extra day. It'll be five days. So if it's four days later, the upcoming year, every year it's going to be four days later because of the extra four days, right, of 350 is, 354 is divisible by seven by, with a remainder of four. Every year it's going to be four days. In a leap year, it's going to actually be five. So then what day is it going to happen? If it was, if Rosh Chodesh Nisan was on Sunday, Right, then what's going to happen? So, Havale Resh Chodesh Di'ir Male Shabta. Rosh Chodesh Di'ir is going to be on Erev Shabbat. Okay, now we're back to this. So, this year it started on Wednesday, Rosh Chodesh, on the first year. Now, by the way, this contradicts. If the first year, the first day of the month was of Nisan, was the uh, Wednesday, then two weeks later on the 15th is going to come out not on Thursday, like we said, but on Wednesday. And that's going to push everything a day earlier because everything was based on that that the day they left Egypt was a Thursday. According to this version, the day they left Egypt was a Wednesday, which pushes everything a day earlier, which means instead of being on Shabbat, it's going to be Erev Shabbat. And then they're going to say, because Rabbi Yossi said it was Sunday. Rabbanan said it was Monday, and according to this version, it's going to be on Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh Sivan, which means the Torah was given, well then you have to decide, was it given on the 6th or the 7th, but whatever it is, it's off by a day. So what do they say? Even though I said every year is 354 days, actually it could theoretically have less. Since they did the Kiddush HaChodesh based on the new moon, it could theoretically have, and, and this, there's a whole debate in different places in the Gemara, whether you could potentially have. Normally, it's six whole months and six chaser months, six, right? 629 day and 630. Sometimes it's a little different, balanced off by one. Sometimes it could be off by two even. So they're basically going to say that that year, there were either 353 days or 352 days, and that accounts for Rabbi Yossi or the rabbis. So then they say, the Rabbi Yossi, Shiva Chaserin Avid. There were, there were seven months that were um, 29 days, which makes it a day, right? It pushes everything off. L'Rabbanan, Hamisha Chaserim. Okay, there were, I'm sorry, Shmona Chaserim. There were eight months that were 29-day months in that year after Matan Torah, which means you were less a day, which means that the day of the following year was a day, right? There was not a hefresh of four from year to year. There was a hefresh of either three or two, and that gets us to the days we need either for the rabbis or for Rabbi Yossi. Okay, we'll end with our complicated counts here, and we'll pick up with more of this tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.